Hello everyone, in this video we'll work with a serial in parallel shift register. We'll see the technical details and working principle of the device and then with the circuit that we'll build, we're going to connect it to the MSP430 microcontroller. And by writing C code, we are going to do a few applications. First, we'll see the definition of the shift register. Second, we'll see in detail the shift register that we are going to use in our video, SN74HC595 from Texas Instruments. Then we'll form a circuit with a shift register, 8 LEDs and 8 current limiting resistors. Finally, we will use Code Composer Studio for creating different examples with our MSP430 to play with our LED array. A flip-flop is an element which can store one bit of data, and registers are formed by connecting several flip-flops. A register which is capable of shifting its stored bits is called a shift register. A shift register is formed by chain-connected flip-flops where the output of a flip-flop is connected to the input of the other. Flip-flops are fed by the same clock source. Let's take a look at the logic diagram of a simple 4-bit shift register. Here you can see that the output of the flip-flops are connected as inputs of the next flip-flop and they are all using the same clock source. The SN74HC595 shift register that you can see in the picture is an 8-bit serial in parallel out shift register that feeds an 8-bit D-type storage register. If you look at the definition of the pins, ACR stands for serial input, OE stands for output enable, R clock is register clock, SR clock is shift register clock, SR clear is shift register clear, and QA to QH are the outputs. Here you should pay attention that the output enable and the shift register clear pins are active low, meaning that you have to connect pin 13 to the ground to enable output and you have to connect pin 10 to VCC in order to avoid clearing the shift register's content. Now let's see how these pin states affect the shift register. This table is taken from the datasheet of our shift register and it summarizes the operating principle of the device. As we mentioned in the previous slide, you need to set the OE active low pin to ground in order to enable output. There may be times that you don't want to get the output, so you can set this pin's voltage high. If you want to clear the content of the shift register, you should send the active low SR clear to low. Here we see how to push input bits to the serial input. While the input is in high state, we send the rising edge from the shift register clock pin. And the first stage of the shift register goes high, other stages store the data of previous stage respectively. While the input is in low state, and we send the rising edge from the shift register clock. First stage of the shift register goes low, other stages store the data of the previous stage respectively. And as soon as we send the rising edge from the storage register clock, R clock for short, then shift register data is stored in the storage register. This is a timing diagram taken from the data sheet of the shift register. You can see that the input that we sent from the SER input is triggered by the SR clock and pushed towards the first flip-flop. And as soon as the R clock is received, it's inserted into the storage register. And since the OE pin is in low state, meaning that the output is enabled, we can see the shifted value in the output of QA. And the output is shifted with each SR clock cycle and R clock cycle. Now let's see this in a better way with an animation. This diagram is taken from the data sheet of the shift register. Now let's use the information that we learned till now to understand better how the shift register works. The blue block is the shift register block and the pink block is the storage register block. Now let's take a look at the input pins that we are going to use. In our application, we'd like to enable the output all the time. So we'll directly connect the output enable actor low pin to the ground. And since we don't want our shift register to be cleared at any time in our example application, we'll connect the SR clear active low pin directly to the VCC. Now let's start feeding the shift register with the 8-bit array that you can see on the left-hand side. Here at the first step, our serial input is at high voltage, representing a 1-bit. As soon as we trigger a clock cycle in the shift register clock pin, our first bit is inserted in the first stage of the shift register. And as we trigger a clock cycle in the storage register clock pin, 
the bit or bits that is stored in the shift register are inserted in the storage register and since the output is enabled we can observe this change in the output pins let's quickly go to the next step in this step the serial input is at low voltage representing a zero bit as soon as the sr clock is triggered with the pulse the input is inserted in the first stage and the first stage's content is pushed or shifted to the next stage and as we again trigger the storage register clock the content of the shift register is inserted in the storage register and we can see the new output now let's see the rest of the process until all 8 bits are inserted in our shift register You can see that the 8 bits that we inserted serial to the SN74HC595 shift register can now be observed parallelly from the output. This is the reason that this shift register is a serial in parallel out shift register. Now let's see the circuit that we will use for our examples with the MSP430. In our setup, we are going to connect 8 LEDs over 330 ohm current limiting resistors. We'll connect the VCC and ground pins of the shift register to VCC and ground pins on the MSP430. And as we mentioned in the previous section, we are going to connect pin 10 as our clear active low to VCC in order to avoid clearing the shift register. And we'll connect active low output enable pin to ground to enable output constantly. Then we'll connect pin 14 serial pin to the P1.0 pin of the MSP430. The pin 12, the storage register clock pin to P1.5 pin of the MSP430. And we'll connect pin 11 serial clock pin to the p1.4 pin of the msp430 here i drew the circuit using fritzing so that you can set up your circuit easily all right since we learned how the shift register works and we set up the connections shown on the diagram we can open code composer studio to write code and play with our led array here you can see our setup the eight output pins are connected to eight current limiting resistors and then to the leds we are getting the ground and VCC from our launch pad. And the yellow cable is the serial input, which is connected to P1.0 of the launch pad. The orange cable is connected to the shift register clock. And the green cable, which is connected to P1.5, is connected to the arc clock of the shift register. You can see that the output enable active low pin is connected to the ground. And the active low shift register clear pin is connected to VCC. Okay, now let's take a look at our first example. In the first lines, we are defining the input port numbers that we are going to use. P1.0, which will be the serial input. P1.4 for the shift register clock. And P1.5 as the storage register clock. Here, actually, we do not set the port to P1. But we will do it later on while writing to the P1 there and P1 out registers. Then we are defining two functions which are for creating clock pulse for shift register and storage register respectively. At the bottom of the code you can see these functions. In the SR clock pulse function, the P1.4 pin of the microcontroller is set to high and then set to low immediately, which creates a clock pulse as we saw in the previous sections. And the R clock pulse function does the same for the port P1.5 which is connected to the register pin of the shift register. Now let's take a look at our main function. By default, the CCS stops the watchdog timer with this command. Then we set the P1.0, P1.4 and P1.5 pins as output by line 11. Then we define I as an integer. We'll use this as an index in the for loop and we reset all the output ports with this line. Then we create an infinite loop with while 1 and perform the actions we saw in the presentation. With line 15, we set the serial input to high. 
and then we trigger the SR clock pulse in line 16. Then we set the serial input to low again. At this moment, the first stage of the shift register includes a 1 bit. Then in the for loop we send storage register and shift register clock pulses in order to shift the single 1 bit through the output pins. In line 21, we are setting a delay to be able to observe this shift, otherwise it will be too fast for the human eye to catch. Now let's debug and run the code and observe the LEDs. Let's click on resume. You can see that the single 1 bit and the following 0 bits are being shifted towards the shift register. At this point, we can use the onboard button of the launchpad with our circuit. You can remember that we had connected the SR clear pin to VCC in order to avoid the reset. However, we can connect it to P1.3 on the launchpad, which is in turn connected to the button, which runs in active low state, meaning that as we press the button, we will be able to reset the shift register. Let's try that. Now I've connected P1.3 port to the shift register clear pin of the shift register. So when I press on the button on the launchpad, you see that the shift register is cleared. I'm going to press it once again. It's cleared again. In the second example, we are going to send two high input in the shift register so that we will be able to observe two LEDs being shifted towards the shift register. Let's debug and run it. Let's click on resume. You can see that two one bits are being shifted towards the shift register. Let's go to our third example. In the third example, we are going to send one zero one bits consecutively. Let's debug and run it. You can see that 101 bit sequence is being shifted towards the shift register. In the fourth example, we are going to shift an 8 bit number. Actually, this is the exact number that we had used in our presentation. In order to do this, we'll create a send bit function which sends the output as high if the argument sent to it is not equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, it's going to send low voltage. Now let's see how we are going to use this function to send the data. In the for loop, we are using the end operation to the data to send variable with a one bit, which is shifted in each iteration. Let's see what this means. This is the data that we would like to send. And in the for loop, first we are going to end it with this value, which is equal to 1. The result is 1, so it's not equal to 0. So our function is going to be sending 1 in the serial output. And in the next iteration, we are going to end our data with this value, which is 2. And the result is going to be 0. So our function is going to be sending 0 in the serial output. So we are going to continue shifting this one bit towards the end and in each iteration we are going to be ending this data with this value. This operation is allowing us to send each bit of our data through the serial output. Now let's debug and run the code. Let's click on resume. You can see our data to send value on our LEDs. So we have 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 0, 0, 01 in the LED array. In this last example, we are going to send a series of data. Here we'll send the numbers starting from 1 to 255 will be shifted through the register. Let's debug and run the code. Let's click on resume. You can see that the LED array started counting from 1 to 255 in binary. We can click on the onboard button to reset the shift register. 
However, the counting will continue from where it was reset. This was the end of the video. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Bye.